Welcome to HQ Live. Hi, I'm Vicki Hoth from Handy Quilter, and joining me as my guest today is Debbie Brown from New York. Hi. Debbie is one of our national educators, and she loves, loves, loves to quilt on the Sweet 16. Her name is Hazel, and we've bonded over the last many <laughs> years together. So one of the questions that we get a lot when we're doing our lives, people will, whether no matter what subject, it always someone pops in and says, I want to do, I want you to do an HQ Live on the Sweet 16 and how to manage large quilts. Debbie, you are the queen of that. You know how to do it. You have some really cool tips here. I have a few tips. On how to do it. My lap is full of things. Yes. I'm, and so, and I see there's something here. I'm just going to pull out and bong you on the head and then put it back. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. Debbie, tell us how you do it. Well, when I'm working with a small quilt, it's really easy to manipulate the fabric. I can move it around and stitch. Nothing's hanging over the table. And it's not a problem at all to do something small like this. And it's gorgeous. It is really gorgeous. If we just held that up just for a minute for the camera to see, it is so beautiful. Metallic. Metallic. And pink is one of my favorite pink. colors. So you scored on that one. Or, you know, a little quilt like this. A lot of ruler work. Beautiful, fun, fun quilt. All done on the Sweet 16. All done on the Sweet 16. Ruler work, I'm sure, with the straight Tons lines. of ruler work, yeah. Okay, we'll get to that, too. We'll do some ruler work today. All right. Okay. I think you'll not find this in your suitcase when you go home. Uh, it has a chip in it. I will check. Uh. <laughs> so... The key to keeping a large quilt on your Sweet 16 is to make sure that it's all on the table. If you have anything hanging over the sides or in front or in the back, you're going to get a lot of drag and your quilting is going to get all bumpy and it's not going to look right and you're going to wrestle the entire time you're quilting. Plus, it is hard on the body. It really is. Shoulders, Quilting hands. shouldn't hurt. Um, we should do this for relaxation and not to cause pain. Yes. So uh, right now we have the 36 inch wide table that we're using and I can keep this entire quilt on the 36 inch wide so table. So how large is this quilt? Um, this quilt is about 55 to 60 inches square so it's pretty easy. So no, if you had a king size quilt the same thing you're going to do the same I'm going to do the exact same thing. I use a very expensive and hard to find quilting tool. Pool noodles. One for me, one for you. Right, okay. right. That's what my grandkids do with these. Exactly <laughs> what they're for. That's what quilters do with them too. So I've actually cut this small, not for demonstration. I use it this size. This is one third of a pool noodle approximately. There's no major um, problems Measure. with having it a half inch or an inch off here so or there. So it's manageable. It's manageable. Third. I've tried this with the entire length of the pool noodle and it's wider than the table. So as I'm sliding the quilt around, when it goes over this way, the pool noodle comes off the side and I get the same drag all over again. So okay. cutting these in half or in thirds, in thirds. makes it manageable, even the uh, large, large quilt. A large, large quilt. I'm going to roll this in the center so that as I'm quilting left and right, which is what I typically do, since that is the space of the machine, I can quilt all the way to the right and it's going to stay on the table and all the way to the left and it's going to stay on the table. So you're going to roll this whole quilt up to this size. To this size. I make a nice little package. It's like a swimming pool right in there. With it, is. Pool noodles. it is. It is. All right. So I've already rolled two sides to show that it uh, that I started it, but it's really there's no major science to this and no major trick. I just start rolling it. Okay. And then I take one of the handy quilter handy quilter. Oh, happened. Oh, we'll start pin. with a pin. So I pin the corners. So this way, it won't unroll on me in the corner. Okay. So there we go. So you're you're holding that to this pool noodle or this fabric fabric yeah. all right good and then job. i need a clamp oh one of our clamps our hold tight clamps it's a hold tight clamp this and is the large size it's the large size and i'm 
simply going to attach the fabric to the to the pool noodle that way so it doesn't unroll itself. You're really managing that. It is. And I can take this over. So these hold tight clamps that you can purchase on our website or at your retailer for lots of things yeah. using but Yeah, they're great on the need. they're great on some of our machines, but they work wonderfully for here. Okay. So I've rolled the fourth side up. You need another one. Boy, you have made this large quilt very manageable, just fitting within. Oh, and I'll take my pin. pins. You need another pin. I'm need I've one got last some more. pin. And these are the handy quilter pins. They're nice and long. Okay. Just pin it in. And this is going to be a quilt of valor. So you see, it's a scrappy, patriotic mm -hmm. quilt. Uh, once I have this all packaged, I can now quilt it. Um, it. It fits on the table well. I can quilt to the right or the left. The problem comes in when I start bringing it toward me. I'm going to still get some of that drag. It falls off It's going right to fall here. off the mm -hmm. front of the table. So I have a laminate pillow. Um, this is a 20 inch pillow and I used quilters cotton on the back and a laminate fabric on the front and I'm just wedging it between myself and the table so it extends the, okay. the sliding surface of the quilt so all the way to my it body. So this slippery and this on the back makes it so that you don't get too warm. Right, if, if I have the laminate on my lap it would be way too mm -hmm, warm. Mm -hmm. um, so as I'm quilting it's going to slide right up my lap and it's not going to hang over the edge. Um, you can use any size pillow that's comfortable for your lap. Yeah. So wow. I'm just going to quilt that way. Now one of the largest benefits of this is when you're using the true stitch um, because that's the, our stitch regulator. That's the stitch regulator and we have a controller that sits under the quilt. Uh, if you are puddling your quilt and just kind of smushing it onto the table, the true stitch can kind of wiggle around and you might not get as accurate of a stitch whenever you're working with it um, because you need to have the controller move exactly the same way as the mm -hmm. fabric is moving under the needle. This is keeping your quilt perfectly straight and square and I can take my controller and magnet it kind of in the back of my quilt sandwich. I usually put it in the back center okay. because I have a table overlay on mm -hmm. my machine which on covers the up the surface of the machine. Uh, so I can... Makes a smooth surface. It, so I have so an uninterrupted no surface mm -hmm. for my stitch regulator to make contact with while I'm stitching. And I can do all of my quilting this way. So how would you, oh, go, I can see you're going right there. I was going to ask you, how would you hold your hands? Well, I hold my hands a variety of different ways depending on the type of quilting that I'm doing. Okay. Uh, if I'm doing a large edge-to-edge -edge design, I can simply steer the quilt by holding onto the pool noodles. And that really works. It can be very hand-friendly. It gives you handles to hold onto while you're moving okay. your quilt. But That's if I'm doing idea. ruler work or some really tiny work, I can come in and have a hand on a ruler and a hand on the quilt. So, and your ruler has the grip on the back. Most so it, definitely. So that it won't just slide. Mm -hmm. It grips the fabric. It really does. Um, if, and if you put ruler grip on your ruler and it's still sliding, add more ruler grip. There's, there's not a tip. problem with adding good more. Not, you don't want a little bit of ruler grip on here. You want a good amount okay. to make good contact. Um, so I can come in and I can do the tiniest of little work here, or I can do very large movements. I can do ruler work. And once I've finished quilting everything within this packaged area, I can then unroll my quilt. Okay, I have a question yes, first before we start unrolling this quilt. You're going to prepare your, your sandwich, the three layers, yes. and you're going to do either a pin-based or based with, you know... A I variety of methods, yes. A variety of methods that you can do, the hand-based or have a long armor, stitch it across, mm -hmm. so that everything based. is... Or spray-based, mm -hmm. correct. Everything is sandwiched together so it's held. So can I start in the top left corner and work my way? What, do, I, do I have to do this and start in the center? What, how do you manage these large quilts? It's a question. It's a great question. Do I roll everything up and then start here? Or tell me what you do before you unroll this. That's, that's an excellent, excellent question. If I'm doing a really heavy custom quilting job on a quilt, I will probably stitch in the ditch the whole quilt before I start. So then that gives it more stability. It gives me more stability and I can start in the top left corner, the bottom right, or anywhere I want. Uh, the quilt is technically quilted once you've stitched it in the ditch. Mm -hmm. You're holding it all together and the rest is simply for embellishment. 
Okay. And it's going to make it look prettier, but it's not adding to the stability of your quilt. So if I need to do tons and tons of fancy quilting in all the little areas, stitching in the ditch is the most important thing. And would you start at the top left? or where I usually you... start stitching in the ditch in the middle. In the middle? I and do. And work your way out. So why? Uh, because if there's, if I was not as precise in basting as I would choose to be, because accidents can happen. Uh -huh. If there's a little extra fullness in the backing or the front, I want to push it toward the edge. Okay. Um, if I start at the edge and work toward the middle, I can get a big bump in the middle, oh. Oh, yes. and there's nowhere for it to go except to place a label over top of it mm -hmm. when you're done. If, if you have a big old crease in the middle of your uh -huh. quilt, there's nothing you can do okay. except take it out. Okay, good. All okay. right. Um, if I'm doing an edge to edge job, just just quilting free motion pebble, I mean free motion flowers, swirls, leaves, like, swirls, like this. anything, um, I will start in a middle row. I don't start in the middle middle of the quilt. So I'll roll the top of the quilt down and the bottom of the quilt up, and then I'll start on one edge and quilt the whole middle row. I like it when my knots end up in my batting instead of in the middle okay. of my quilt. Mm -hmm. So I do start in the edge and I would quilt them in rows. So I would do the middle row and then roll up and do the next row up and roll down and do the next so row down. So you work all the way out till all the quilts up here in the throat space. Correct. Would you turn your quilt around or would you then just roll this back up and start working up the quilt? Uh, my goal is to let the table do its job and the table's job is to hold the fabric. I never want to have more than half of the quilt in my lap. The exception yeah, to that, <laughs> the exception to that is if I'm doing feathers and if I can only do feathers in one direction mm -hmm. and I have to keep keep the quilt in that direction to make my quilting look good, then I'll struggle with a little extra fabric in my lap to make my stitching look good. Um, there's nothing you're really going to do wrong um, and make exceptions as you need them for, so that the quilting turns out the way you want it to be. Okay. All right. Well, go ahead and do what you were going to do. I just... Yeah. No. Great I'm questions. Just, curious about all this. So I'm, after I've stitched this entire area, I'm going to unroll this side. Can we hold those pins for you? Yeah, I'll give you these pins. Thank you. And I'm going to unroll it. I'll move the stitch regulator so I know where that is. And I can move it over and stitch further over this way. Um, with a table extension on this side of the table, um, I don't have to roll it quite as small as you saw in the beginning. So we do have 18 inch table extensions that you can put on the left right side there. and the right side of your quilt and you can make that larger row uh, without ever sliding over the edge of your, of your table and getting that drag. Yeah, because that's the dre dreaded drag, right? It is the dreaded drag. Yeah. It is, it, if you have anything hanging over the edge, your quilting is not going to look the way you want it to. Um, we also have some uh, the cabinets. Yeah, we have a couple of different cabinets that, that are larger as well. For different options. Yeah, yes. I think it's the quilty tab. Quilty cabinet is sideways, and the angel wings yeah, is forward. Yeah, so forwards. that's one cabinet that rather than stitching from the front here, you would be stitching from the side. The machine bit would be oriented 90 degrees, and you would be stitching that way. So right, just a little a different bigger option table. with larger tables. Yes. Right. Um, so yeah. that. D does that make a lot of sense or a little sense? Totally, because when I do quilts like this and they drag, I hate it. I mean, literally, that's a big word. I hate it. I, this is what really works best for me. Um, I like to have it all packaged so it's all straight, and then I move on to the next section. Well, it really does keep everything straight, so nothing scrunching and right. creating those wrinkles that right. we may get. Yeah, this is what I found to work the best for me. Um, you can roll it without the pool noodles, uh, but it doesn't have the stability and wants to keep on rolling itself. Yeah, that stiffness. Uh, and you don't get that. to smack your friends either hey, without having a pool noodle. That's right. <laughs> Had to get you back. Or your grandkids when they walk exactly. in. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So if I would have a table extension over there. So I'm going to be the table you're extension. Vicki is now my table extension. So I would re-roll it over here um, if the quilt were much longer. Roll it up, have a new sandwich, and quilt over this way. And then when I get to the end, I would stitch off into the batting and trim it when I was done. Okay. All right. And then I would take it out, unroll it, roll it up, or roll it down to do the next horizontal row so on So there is some manipulating you with this. You are going to manipulate it. But uh, you're going you're gonna to be in control with you, this. You're not going to re-manipulate it every three seconds, every time you You've move your hands. You've got a lot of throat space here, right. a lot of pool space, swimming pool space yes. here to do some quilting. So 
when you place your hands on this to manipulate it, to move it while you're stitching, how do you, I, I'll take that little, okay. this, I want you to place your hands and move this little, oh, I got the pull noodle. You got the pull noodle. <laughs> I don't trust her. Yeah, you shouldn't either. <laughs> so put your hands the way you would stitch. Um, when I'm stitching, I can stitch this way, or I would grab the roll. If I'm doing large quilting, I like to steer with a large motion. If I'm doing little quilting, I really need to get up closer to it. Okay, I find that when I'm this, no matter what, I have found that my hands don't have enough grip to move the quilt. Right. The bigger it is, the harder the grip. Definitely. And I have found there are tools for that. There are, and I have some uh, machine grooves here which have the rubberized tips or uh -huh. sticky tips, whatever. Um, and what's great is I don't have to remember left and right. You can use either hand on either hand. So there are different sizes and on the back of the package you can see that there are different sizes for your hand. You can just place your hand on there and figure out what size you are. And it's really true to size. It is, and the only thing that I really love about them is it doesn't make me hot. They, not like a, it, you know, because I've heard some people go out and go buy garden gloves and they use those and that would make them hot. But these do not. No, and these are grip. nice and breathable. Yeah. And you can see that it's helping to move my fabric with yeah, really so little let's contact. See with your, now you're gonna just frame that with your hands and it totally grips that and moves it. It does. And just as a reminder, when you're quilting, um, you're going to be quilting keeping your fingers pointing straight up. You're not going to be moving your quilt around this way. Why? Um, it's not as good of a move. It's not as smooth of a move. You're taking a lot of bulk of the quilt with you, and you're going to get bubbles and inconsistent stitches, whether or not you're using the true stitch. If you're using the yeah. stitch regulator, you'll get inconsi inconsistent stitches. Also, if you're simply moving the fabric. Can you see how much bulk has to move yes. every time I turn? So my right hands. to left, up, and right down, to left, forward. up and down. I can do a perf I can do a great circle. Perfect circle, and these But are really my fingers nice. have never moved. They're always pointing straight up. Mm -hmm. So you just frame that, mm -hmm. and there you go. You make a hoop with your hands and start quilting. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Debbie, we've take talked about the large quilts. Lots of lots of information there. I really, it helped me. Okay. I hope it helped our viewers today. So now. You are also an expert at using rulers on the Sweet 16. Oh, it's the most fun thing ever. It really is. Really? It really is. Yeah, okay. So, you know, people go, I didn't know you could use rulers on the Sweet 16. It's for the stand-up, for the no. long arms. So let's talk about what we do to prepare to use rulers. Is there anything we need to know? Well, when we're talking about rulers, we're not talking about rotary cutting rulers, for starters. Um, a rotary cutting ruler is too thin and will slide right under the foot of your machine. Um, we also have the sure foot we can add on. Uh, it's a taller foot made for rulers. So we have our quarter inch ruler. So today, we're going to do both for you. You didn't know that. I didn't. But we will start with our ruler foot. Okay. Which, and then after a little bit, let's put on the shore foot okay. so they can see just how awesome it is. Okay. okay. All right. So keep going. I'm just thought I'd throw that in. Anytime. <laughs> um, so I have uh, the quarter inch ruler and th uh, the foot that comes on the machine works, f works well with rulers. But when I'm working with a Sweet 16, if I have my ruler in one hand and the fabric in one hand, they can kind of slide separately. And I want to be able, you know, if I'm holding a ruler, I've lost the grip in this glove. So I want to be able to push the fabric with the template. And I have a handy grip on here. And more is always better than mm -hmm. less. And I can make this entire quilt that I have here just with the VersaTool. Okay, so this, you have used this ruler a lot. Many, many times. And I can tell, and you've stacked it on top of other rulers. I have. With this nice handy grip. In my and suitcase. It has, yeah, because <laughs> you travel a lot. And it has scratched it up, but is it, does it hurt it at all? Not it makes the least. No it still difference. works perfectly. So I just want you to see that, that it, it is scratched a little yeah, bit. Yeah, these are the ones I really use. you still have all the etchings on it. You still have the handy tape or the handy grip mm -hmm. on it. Everything works great. So let's go to town and see what you can do. Why do you love these? I love them for myself. It's actually one of my favorite techniques, but I love them for my students. Uh, many students are afraid of free motion quilting. Okay. Because I can't imagine those designs in my head and make them happen on fabric, but I can follow a line. 
So it can, and I can get a straight and line. And I can get a straight line yes. or a nice curve yeah. that I can't get yeah. free motion. So these are for beginners as well. You don't have to be advanced to be able to use a ruler. You can use it right away. And you may find it's even easier than free motion quilting if you're a little timid in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So I'm going to stitch one of these up today. Okay, that's beautiful. Well, thank you. You just stitched that out just the other day. I just, just stitched it out the other day. Okay. Yeah. So I'm I gonna took. Hold this on my lap thank so you. that we might have to refer to it. Okay. So we took, I took some golden threads paper and with a pencil and a quilting ruler, not a long arm ruler, but a, a quilting Marked ruler, up. I drew a, a 10 inch square that was filled with two inch squares. So these are five two inch squares. Okay. And I stitched through it with a sewing machine. Um, I put the bumps on the top side and took some of my pounce. So the bumps, that's where the needle goes down and creates right. a bump when on the I back When I stitch side. it, it's this way. And, then you flip and when over. I pounce it, I flip it over. Okay. Um, so I have pounce the top of this to oh, transfer my lines. I have a pounce. You have the pounce. Here. Okay. Do, so you can see the pounce. And this is not to pounce on it. Just it is rub. to rub across it. And you should be able to see those Yeah, blue I used lines. blue so you could see it today. And now I can reuse this this stencil as many times as I like. So it's not a one-time stencil. It's not a one-time stencil. Um, and the markings are all on here. I can do this entire quilt without any markings, but I'm worried I might slide a little bit. And if I want to have really nice curves that are accurate, I want to make sure they're accurate. So I usually okay. mark whenever I use rulers. All right, so you've got that same grid there. I have the same grid right here. Which will look like this when we're finished. Just like that when we're finished. Yes. I can't imagine it, but there's got to be, it's going to happen. Yes. Okay. So I'm putting my needle in the bottom corner and needle down, needle up, so I can bring up the bobbin thread. There should be no surprises on the back of your quilt later on. So what type of thread are you using? Are you using a heavy thread fine brand? I mean, what do you do for thread? I do almost anything with thread. I love thread. But today I'm using about a 40 weight polyester in the top. Okay. And a 60 weight polyester in the bottom. So this is a, an Omni from it is. Superior Threads. It is. And, and then just like their bottom line. It's a bottom line bobbin. Um, I typically like a little bit thinner bobbin thread, so I don't have to wind as many bobbins. Uh -huh. Is that the reason? <laughs> That's the reason. It makes a great stitch. It looks and great you, on the back of your quilt. You normally try to always match up your bobbin thread. I noticed today that we haven't done that, but you would match colors top I and match bottom. colors as, close as, as closely yeah. as possible. That's good. This one actually matches more with the fabric. fabric. But, mm -hmm. So let's go for it. Let's see okay. what it looks like. So once the needle is down, I'm a quarter inch away from where my template is going to be placed. And I can place the horizontal line here on my chalked line and the vertical line from where I'm sitting on the chalked line. And I'm going to press my fingers. Okay, before you start stitching. Yes. Well, I want to, so I'm just thinking of all these things that I have to prepare before yes. I ever start the stitching. I, what have you set everything up on your screen? As? Okay, great question. Um, there's a lot of things you're thinking about when you're using rulers. Is my ruler on the line? Is my hand on the ruler? Is the ruler next to the foot? Mm -hmm. And how am I moving everything? So I take a couple of decisions away. Okay. Whenever I stitch, I put my foot all the way to the ground so that I don't worry about how fast I'm going. So all the way, so you're doing this not in stitch regulated Well, currently today. I'm not in stitch, I'm not in stitch so regulated that, currently. In manual mode, you've got to put that speed All the way then. to the ground. So I set my speed a little slower than I would do my regular free motion quilting in. Okay. So I set it 28 to 30, somewhere in there. And you can play around and see what makes the stitch length that you like. Okay. Um, but if you do have a true stitch, it's a really great time to use it here with your rulers. Because all of those things you're thinking about, the last thing you have to worry about is the size of your stitch. The, the, the stitch regulator will take care of that for you. Okay, so do you do you set your needle down or up for rulers? I like to set my needle down because okay. it locks it in the corner for me to reposition. Okay. And a, a, a really good rule is to never have the needle running, the needle moving, and the ruler moving at the same time. So if you're repositioning your ruler, Take your foot off the pedal. Stop the machine. Okay, so Only when have you're, one when of you're moving the fabric and the ruler, they'll all be moving. Correct. But you don't just take. I that don't and pick move the ruler up and move it while needle. I'm still stitching. Good tip. You don't want those to come in contact with each other. Uh, bad yeah, things that would could be happen. Really bad thing. Okay. 
All right, so you, sorry, I probably stopped you from saying something, but you were talking about your fingers up at the top there. So I keep my fingers where the ruler grip is, and I want them close to the edge rather than down here. It's much more accurate. Wow, I see how that popped that ruler up. Right, you can that actually dislodge it. So I'm going to keep my hand down. I'm putting my other hand on the fabric, put my foot all the way to the ground, and I'm going to stitch over this half circle and it stops when it hits the bump at the bottom of the ruler. Okay, those little stop right. guides, okay? And once I take my foot off the pedal, I can move this, replace it, center it center. on all the lines, um, and if I missed this corner a little bit, here's, I can fudge it a little bit to get it make to it fit in. I can make it to take a stitch oh, over okay. if I need to. Um, we want it to be perfect, but we can make people think it is. <laughs> So I'm going to stitch over another one. So how, I know there are quilters that, that when they use a circle, that when they get to like 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, they tend to just veer off to that direction and they don't get that true circle, or veer off to that. How, tell me what your tip is, because I noticed it is perfect. My tip when, when working with the rulers, I found that I veer off the edge because I start to get comfortable and stop thinking about what I'm doing. Okay. Um, it's usually when I'm thinking about what's for lunch that I veer off oh. the edge or any other pizza. Anything. By the way, pizza. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so as I'm stitching, I'm concentrating on where I'm ending, and I'm looking at where I'm ending, keeping the foot pressed against the ruler, keeping the ruler pressed against the so foot, they, but I'm concentrating on what I'm doing. Sometimes when I'm quilting, I can daydream a little bit if I'm doing a big overall type of design. This is not the time to daydream. You want it to pay close attention. You're using rulers because you want accuracy. Yes. So, and you only have to pay attention for this long at a time. You can you can okay. keep focused because that long. Because you can't control what the, where the machine's going. It's there, it's staying the there. The machine is it's right where here. you're putting that ruler yes. up against it. Yeah. So when it gets to those points, that's when you there's can stop. four points that I see that it goes oops out yeah it's away. up here that's usually when I just stop concentrating All so right. I focus in I on it I, I won't talk to you then okay <laughs> so I'm gonna stitch right to the top of this one and now I've done my first row of clamshells okay yes you have I can now adjust for the second row of clamshells put my ruler down, line everything up, and it sounds silly, but you put the line on the line and the line on the line, and that's how you, it works. Uh, that's how you adjust your so ruler. So you're lining up this line along the stitching or above the stitching? It's right with the stitching, which should be right where the chalked line is. And then the needle comes down there and you right. have the hopping foot allowance right. below it. Correct. Oh, I think I just wiggled it. Okay, let's do this. Okay, I heard a little squeak there. I was pushing too hard. Uh, so that meant the hopping foot was rubbing against the ruler yeah. harder than, but it didn't hurt anything. It didn't anything. hurt anything at all. The squeaking Better that is than, it than the off. other way. Yes. Yeah. You're okay. I, I have not heard the machine, the foot, the ruler, the quilt, or anything. Oh, it's just a little squeak. Now here, I, I'm actually about a half of a stitch off of where the previous stitch line okay. is. And I can fudge that. I can just come in and take one so more stitch. So just a stitch mm -hmm. with your foot. Yeah. Okay. And if you're not as accurate with your foot, you can always press the screen to get that single stitch. Okay. And I notice your stitches are really nice. They're the same stitch length because you've done this forever. I've done this for a while. Yes. But there, I squeaked again. But you were touching it. I was touching. To touch. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll finish this and row. This your half. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep stitching along those lines all the way through the through the entire segment. Okay. Um, do you want me? What I want to do now is, you know, we talked about changing out the okay. feet. Let's change out, we'll clip your thread. Okay. Let's change out to the shore foot, okay. the higher foot, so they can see how that works and okay. how. That would okay, be great. all right, we'll be right back. Okay, so we've changed to the shore foot, which gives us a higher profile of the ring around. And look at the difference, look at the difference of the height of that. It's just a little insurance policy. It, it's a it, good, it's a insur good insurance and policy. And the nice thing is, is it has a little scoop out so you get to see in there. I can still see in there perfectly. Mm -hmm. So let's remind them what we're, we're going to accomplish here. You have quilted one side of 
There you go. So these are my clamshells. And now you're going to create that pumpkin seed back, going back the same, very same um, ruler. Are you going to leave this oriented this way? Tell me. Patience, grasshopper. Okay. I will get right there. All right. So. I'm going to move this aside. As a reminder, we'll hold it here in my lap. Put the scissors down over there. I'm going to hold this on my lap. And you go for it, girlfriend. Okay. So I'm going to line this up the same way I've lined everything up. I'm simply turning that half circle upside down. It was a frowny face before, and now it's a smiley face. So I'm lining it right here, and I can stitch. Okay. And sometimes when the ruler's behind me, I can't get all the way around. I have to stop the machine, reposition my hand, and then keep quilting. Okay. My favorite way to hold the ruler is not behind the needle. Yeah. But if I have that I was large feeling a quilt stress right there, <laughs> I, I can totally do it. It is uncomfortable. If it feels uncomfortable when you're doing it, good, you're doing it right. Um, oh. But my favorite way to hold the ruler is between me and the machine. If I have that large, large, large sandwich, that large quilt that I'm working mm -hmm. on, and I only have a little bit of upside down work, I may embrace the discomfort instead of I rotating do. that quilt. But on a little piece like this, I'm just kind of turn it upside down yeah, I and put the ruler back the way that it's comfortable. Uh, this would totally make me feel better. Right, but on a large quilt, can you see how you might just mm -hmm. be uncomfortable instead of rotating it all mm -hmm. the time? So I can continue doing my, so that, these the are nice now clamshells again. It's the quilter's choice on how the comfort on the, yeah. and the safety yeah. And this ruler, how do you like that ruler foot? Or I, I mean love this sure foot. foot. It's, it's a really nice insurance policy. Okay. So I'm just continuing to stitch the way I've been. Here. And look at those pumpkin seeds I just made. One tool. All right, let's just match it up there. We have a little bit more stitching to go, but let me put that down there. Hold on, we'll get it. Yes, I think I recognize it now. Yeah. All and right. one of those looks great for, for a border in a quilt. You don't have to do this um, over a, an entire block or an entire quilt. Something skinny like this makes a great border. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to stitch one more row, and then I'll show you how to fill it in. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to stitch another row, line it up on the chalk lines. And here I didn't have to reposition my hand. That worked so well. So that 31, you have this set at 31% I do. in manual mode. That seems to be really, really doable. It's know? comfortable for me, but if it's a little fast or slow for you, feel free to adjust. Go down to Oop, one more stitch. I didn't quite make that one. Okay. okay. Let me finish here. So you've created th these pumpkin seeds, mm -hmm. these little circles. So let's mm -hmm. do one more row. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Or would you like to change to something else? Well, let's try something new. We do have the multi clamshell. I love it. I love that it has four different sizes that I can use. This is the one you're using mm -hmm. is the four inch, one and a half, a three, and a two. And you know, the thing about this that I love is that I, a lot of times I don't do clamshells, but I need a curve. Right. I need an arc and I have the size that I need just by this mm -hmm. simple tool. So, do you want to use this one for your sure, next one? Sure, I'll change it. I'll hold the versatile. Thank you. And I know you only have one tape, so I know I only have one tape, and that's all, the only place I'm gonna be sure to hold now. Um, if I were doing this at home, I'd probably put two pieces of tape across there to make it okay. more sure. But I'm sure that you are sure. <laughs> I'm, we're sure, yep. we're sure. I'm sure you'll be able to do this. Line. It has all of those same lines yes. on it. And, and I can end the row, one. the half mm -hmm. one at the end. And this is working out perfectly because I have an odd number of squares. If I made this six squares by six squares, you'd have to travel and stitch in the ditch to make it all continue. So there by traveling up, up, you're saying? I'd have okay. to travel up. So the reason this is working so smoothly is I have an odd number of okay. squares. You meant to do that. I did mean to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So it worked exactly the same way. All right. Are you finished with these? Yes. I'm going to take the VersaTool back, back okay. and show you about stitching around the edge. You get the idea that I would finish stitching up at the top. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, but I'm going to do some of those stars um, that we showed that, All right. that we'll I have on my that sample here. Up. Some of these stars, people always ask how I get these so perfect. And the answer is they're not perfect. You just think that they are. Well, because there's so much going on. Right. You just. You don't land on the star. Right. You see it all as right. a beautiful quilt. Okay. So I'm going to do my stars along this line here. Okay. But my needle is up here. So I'm going to stitch in the ditch. The ditch is this chalk line. Okay. And the or it would be your seam line. My seam line, my chalk line, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use the markings on the Versa tool to help me do that. My foot is where I want to start. And the little notch on the end of the Versa tool is lining up on the chalk line or the stitch line okay. or the seam line. I'm going to stitch right down to the middle. Okay. And as we talked about before, I'm now going to cheat and turn the quilt because it's little. I like to stitch this toward me. I think the way the way a, a large quilt, I think you could, it had to be pretty large and unmanageable to not be able to turn it. It's, it's all what you're most comfortable with. If, yeah. if, if I have all of them going in one direction and just one upside down, I'll make that work. Okay. But if it's the whole thing, I will turn it. You'll it's so much more comfortable. Turn. Yes, okay. So here I'm lining those the little stitch in the ditch lines on my VersaTool up on the chalk line again. Okay. And I'm going to stitch through the corner of that set of pumpkin seeds and come down to the middle where these chalk lines overlap. Okay, right so I there. see that you stopped your machine. I'm going to stop. Before ah, you... Right there. There you go. I see you stopped your machine before you moved your ruler. I did. Good girl. I okay. will. I do not like to have the needle moving and the ruler sliding yeah, at the that's same time. Good, good safety. So now that I'm in the middle, I'm going to put the ruler away for a second, and I usually put it away face up, uh, face down, so that the grip is face up. Okay. I don't want the grip rubbing on my table okay. and scratching it. So I'm going to make a star by stitching up to one corner diagonally and down to the opposite corner diagonally. Free so motion. a couple All stitches right. here and here. I'm going to do the same thing in the opposite diagonal and do the same thing across the horizontal line in the middle. And now that I'm back in the middle, replace my ruler, line it up on the chalk line, and stitch, stitch through the center of the pumpkin okay. seed. Okay, let's stop and move that ruler so they can see. So it's not that perfect, looks, but it's perfectly placed. It looks wonderful. Yeah. It, and that was easy. That it's was super really easy. Manageable. It's just three or four stitches in each direction. And your and your My gloves, gloves helped. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to finish this one. Stitch right to the middle. I'm going to do corner, corner, left, and back down to that corner. Do the horizontal and back. If I can see space between my lines, I'm fine with it. I, I really like the free motion look of that. But what's most important for me is to remember I'm always going back to the center. So I'm going to the corner and back to the center, down to the corner and back to the center. Like two or three stitches, just count one, two, three, right. one, just two, three. Up a little bit and back yeah. down. So mm -hmm. they all stay pretty much the same. Right. Okay. And then you're going to finish. I'm going to finish down here. Okay. And that's a row of stars. So before. While we're there, I don't know if this would apply, but what about this out here, your outside border? How My scallops on the outside. Um, I used the same tool and the same markings, and I just I did clamshells around once, and then I moved it over halfway, and I have an overlapping clamshell. Do you want me to show you? Yes. Okay. Let's do it. So I'm turning it upside down here. replacing my hands because I didn't turn the fabric. And then here, this one's a little tricky, it's the corner one. So I'm stitching Let's find a, corner here. a quarter of a circle, and then I'm going to turn it here, still lining it up, and stitch three quarters of a circle all the way around. Well, that was tricky. And that gave me that very round edge here. Whenever I want to, I'm just going to go overlap it now to show you how I overlap it. I'm going to stitch in the ditch or along that chalk to line corner. to the corner and you see how that just moved it over 50%. So offset it. 50%. So I'm offsetting it here. 
Now, those paying careful attention might notice it's not perfectly lined up. I can now just smoosh it over a little bit, okay. and it will end in the right place now. Okay, so a little smaller, but no one's going to see no one. one. Did yeah. you notice that no. that is vastly different? No, I didn't. And it's going to keep that scallop going all the way around. And of course, you can turn this entire quilt upside down to make it easier mm -hmm. for you to stitch. Mm -hmm. Whatever makes you comfortable. And I see that you shift your hands so that you're doing the safety thing and rather trying to contort yourself. Right. You're I, shifting. And I never let go of the ruler. Oh, good I, tip. I place one hand before I remove the other. Okay, so what if you did? You can always reline it up, but in the middle of a curve, if you do bump, if you do readjust the ruler in the middle of a curve, there's a chance to get a tiny little jog of a stitch. Okay, but you do have those lines that you placed on there. You can so you do match it. all mm -hmm. those lines back up. And if I were doing that, I would start slowly to, just to make sure that the stitch landed exactly where okay. I wanted it to. All right. Okay. I think it's time to do your famous ribbon candy. It's for not a quilt of mine if it doesn't have ribbon candy exactly. on it. Exactly. Somewhere. Never. Debbie is known for her ribbon candy. I think every quilt. Pretty much. Pretty much. I, I feel a little sad if a quilt doesn't have ribbon All candy right, I on it. I want to see the expert do so it. So I'm going to start over on this petal here. And so I'm just a reminder this is what the ribbon candy is going to look like. And I, you do it so beautiful. So have at it. Show it off. And uh, you can adjust your quilt if you like to sew it yeah, straight so up and down, that left and right. The way the quilt was positioned, I'd be stitching on the diagonal. And if you're just starting to do ribbon candy, I wouldn't start on a diagonal. I'd straighten it out one way or another. Okay. Okay. So you straightened it. So I straightened it out. Stitching. So I'm now on the horizontal and vertical. Okay. I am going to stitch a loop to one side, move backwards diagonally, and then stitch a loop on the other side. So I'll talk it through. Under, there's a circle, diagonally backwards, pulling it toward me. And, and you're it's always going to the edge of that. Right. Now I may, I may overlap the stitches or I may not. Um, so I'm not as worried that it doesn't hit exactly every time, okay. but what it's doing is filling that space mm -hmm. visually. And here I can do the same thing. I'm in the up and down position. So once you've got all the circles in that, you just go around without ever having to break your thread. Correct. So I can quilt this whole quilt in one knot and fill it through that way. And then you'll go up and over mm -hmm. and it'll be finished and oh we'll it's beautiful another? yes yes we'll just let you keep doing them and thank you for joining our hq live today join us next month for another topic and just enjoy watching debbie quilt